Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Dime Brands will be taking a closer look at the data. The owner of Applebee's and IHOP restaurants reporting fourth quarter profit that beat estimates, thanks in part to an aggressive promotion strategy. The CEO, John Payton, saying this. During the year, we found that guests limited their discretionary spend in response to economic pressures and that this value-conscious behavior continued in the fourth quarter. While this certainly creates challenging and dynamic market conditions, it also allows us to leverage our expertise in delivering exceptional value. John Payton, I'm pleased to say, is with us around the table. John, good morning. Good morning. I want to kick it off with one thing, and I mentioned it at the commercial break, so we should continue this conversation. When Walker Hayes put together that song just a few years ago, did they talk to you about that ahead of time? How did that work out? So, so Walker Hayes wrote the Date Night at Applebee's song two summers ago, and it was a gift from above. We, we did not know it was coming. He is an actual Applebee's fan. He wrote about Date Night with his wife at Applebee's, and he's been an amazing partner to work with. You know, we jumped on it, our marketing team was all over it, and so, you know, that led to uh, the commercial, TikToks, he did over 100 appearances for us, he was at our, amazing. our national conference, fabulous. Free marketing, how many people are doing date night at Applebee's now? How cost conscious are they? Well, speaking of date night at Applebee's, we just had our, our date night um, event where we had we had a, a, a coupon available for $200 that enabled you to eat at Applebee's every week for 52 weeks with a $30 discount. So it was a $1,500 value for $200. We made that available at midnight a few weeks ago. It sold out in a minute. Um, some, some less than a minute. Some commentaries said that we, we broke the internet. Not quite, not quite that. We added server <laughs> capacity. We added Humble customer back. support. Um, and our, our sites might have slowed a little bit, but it was so popular, we did it again at Valentine's Day, a thousand date night passes. So what are you seeing with respect to where people are coming from? Is it the same crowd that's always gone to Applebee's that just have more discretionary spending? Or do you see people sort of that might have gone elsewhere, maybe that was more expensive uh, coming to Applebee's or going to IHOP for an omelet that's very fluffy? A, a, couple, a couple of insights, Lisa, about, about the consumer. We, 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 get, we get asked that question a lot. Are people trading in or out of the category? And from quarter to quarter, we'll see a few more people come in at a higher income level, a few more people at a lower income level. Um, but over time, it's actually fairly consistent. You know, our core guest, from a demographic perspective, earns about fifty to $75,000 a year. And that is that is literally looks like America, right? We've got 3,600 restaurants across the country, and so our guests are families with children, um, uh, uh, older couples who've retired who come to ICOP every, every day for, for breakfast. And so what we do see from a consumer behavior standpoint are a couple of things. The first is throughout 2023 and into 2024, you know, our guest at all three of our brands has been remarkably resilient to, to the extent that it really surprised us a bit. Uh, we do see from our data that they're eating out one or two times fewer you know, per quarter than they, than they did before. And when they make their choices, they are still looking for full service dining because you know, prices are up almost 20% in, in, in restaurants versus 2019. And so if you're going out to eat and QSRs become more expensive as well, they want that experience, they want the service, they want everything that we have to offer at Applebee's and IHOP at, and Fuzzies. Once they find us, they're very value focused. And so, you know, the percentage of our tickets that are taking advantage of our LTOs, our limited time offers, and our, our value portion of our menus are, are up a few ticks from where, from where it was before. So then how do you maintain margins at a time where we keep talking about the fact that people are demanding higher pay? There's a whole question about worker retention. There's a whole question about just the input prices of a lot of foods and how they have remained sticky. How do you manage that? Yeah, so, so margins are the biggest challenge in the industry right now, particularly for our, our owners. We're 100% franchised, right? So, so the impact of labor costs, the impact of, of cost of goods into the restaurants affects our, our franchisees directly. And so we focus on two things. We're doing everything we can to drive the top line, right, through really creative promotions and, and value offerings. Um, and we work with them on re-engineering as best we can the bottom line. So last year, for example, working with our franchisees, we took out $50 million in cost across the system. And we focus on 
things that are sustainable and repeatable, so technology process improvement. You know, one example is we're putting in automated beer dispensers, which saves you know hundreds of thousands of gallons of beer a year by having more accurate pours and less and less waste. And so that's the way we're trying to, to automate things like that and help them manage their costs. Yesterday, Wendy's had received a ton of blowback when they came out and they're going to do dynamic pricing. They said, no, 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 we're not going to raise prices on busy hours, but maybe we'll offer some discounts online. Could you ever see yourself doing that sort of mixed pricing depending on peak and off-peak hours? Yeah, so I come from the hotel industry, right? And I, and I led revenue management when I was at Starwood Hotels for a long time. And, and as you know, with airlines, with hotels, no two people pay the same price for the same hotel room or the same ticket, depending on what channel they purchased it on, when they purchased it, if their loyalty status. You know, we've looked at it for restaurants, but we don't think it, it applies to us or our, or our customers at, at this time. We're hearing the words price gouging yeah. a lot down in Washington, D.C. Can you talk to us about what you think about that? How difficult is it to bring prices back down to where they were a few years ago? It's difficult to bring prices back down when labor costs are escalated and labor is pretty sticky, right? It, it tends not to come back down. Uh, the cost of goods and, and primarily food into the restaurants has stabilized and we're even predicting some deflation in the cost of goods uh, into the restaurants for Applebee's in 2024, about flat to maybe plus one for, for IHOP. When you translate that to pricing, and it's our franchisees who make the pricing decisions because they, they own the restaurants, Typically, you know, pre-2019, everything is pre-2019, right, these days, our franchisees raise prices about 2 to 3% a year. The last couple of years, it's been more in the 5 to 8 or 9 or 9%. What we're seeing now with the stabilizing of both labor and, and cost of goods, we, we think they're back on a path to that 2 to 3% over the next couple of years. I want to talk about the automatic beer dispenser. Not because I'm actually interested in the automatic beer dispenser, but it sort of uh, highlights the amount. And we talk about, you know, just you get a little bit less, and that's one way to manage. It's not uh, a little bit less. It's an accurate pour. Okay, understandably. But then you could just make it an accurate pour of a little bit less. I mean, how much is that something that's going on around the margins? So uh, never, ever. So right now, our, our definition of value is, is great food at a really accessible price, um, an abundant portion, right, and, and the experience you have in the restaurant. And, and Applebee's and, and IHOP and now, and now Fuzzies, but Applebee's and IHOP in particular have been around for 50 and 65 years, and, you know, they've cemented their reputation in consumers' minds um, as the, as the value-oriented brand in both their categories. And, you know, I'm a former chief marketing officer, and, you know, what I've been taught about brands is that you, people go to brands they know and they trust. Yeah. And you can trust that Applebee's and IHOP are always going to have an abundant portion, and that's, that's sacred for us. A pint should be a pint. I'm talking English measures, of course, but a pint should be a pint, Bramo. Well, no shrinkflation. You know, I just yes. want to say something. But warm. The pint is always warm, which I haven't understood. Well, it's a different kind of pint. <laughs> yes. We can get into that another time. I just say in Europe, they actually have lines on all the wine glasses to have accurate pours, so it's something that they've been Should have at. an accurate pour. Okay. I've saved this to the end of the conversation because I don't want to upset you too much, but this is going to sound terribly rude. So forgive me for the framing of this question. I'm just blunt, British. Call me whatever you want. How dependent are you on 40% of this country remaining obese? What happens if Zempic actually does something about it? What happens to you? What happens to this organization? So the, most, the response to that is that our, our menu has something for everyone. Right? And if you went to IHOP years ago, it didn't have protein-based plant-based proteins. You know, it didn't have a series of egg white omelets. It didn't have gluten-free pancakes. You know, and the same is true, <laughs> the same is true at Applebee's. So, you know, what's important for us is that no matter what the, the dietary orientation is of someone in, in, in that family, that we have something for everybody. So right now, are you factoring in any kind of shift from that type of change, given the fact that there is a pretty rapid adoption for these weight loss medications? Yeah, we, we haven't seen yet any material impact on our business, and we're not factoring it in terms of our predictions about traffic and, and comp sales, which really our focus is on the menu and ensuring that whether you're at any one of the three brands, there's, there really isn't something for anyone depending on how they eat and how they choose to eat. But because of this craze almost, do you feel like you're pushed more into being well uh, healthier on your menu? Uh, that, that, that push preceded Ozempic, right? So, so the way Americans eat, you know, has, has been journeying slowly, right, toward more healthy eating um, over time. Have so the portions changed? Our portions have always been the same. It's, it's more about what we're offering and having a broader, a broader menu. Can I just ask one more question about the technology investments? I'm just wondering, do you think that we will always have service in the form of a human? I do. 
I, 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 you know, we, I, I, I use the phrase that we are not a technology company that happens to serve food. We're a food company that embraces technology. And so, for example, at, at IHOP, we've just rolled out a new POS across the whole system. We've got 15, 50 restaurants to go. And with it came handhelds for all of our servers. And so our servers love it because they're turning tables faster. They're making more tips. Our franchisees love it because we're turning tables faster. And we're also raising the average check because servers are attaching beverages more often. Sometimes you forget to put that soda on the, on the, tip when you're, on the check when you're really busy. So it's, it's technology like that that we're using to enable the experience. We're also allowing guests via our app if they want to order in advance and then seat themselves at the table, they can, they can do that. But it's, it's more about how they want to interact with us and giving them all those options. John, this was great. I promise never ever to share the secret ingredient in the omelette, okay? Ever. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> John, thank you. John Payton, the Dime Brands. John, thank you very much. This was great. Thank Appreciate you. it.